Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's session. Today we will go for Paper Six Chemistry ON 2024 Paper Six Variant Two. Let's go. First question is about electrolysis. They say the teachers use the apparatus shown in Figure One Point One to pass an electric current through a molten mercury bromide at temperature of three hundred. During the process shown in figure 1.1, the molten mercury bromide breaks down and forms bromine and mercury. In paper 6, they are very good at telling you all the information. So even though you don't know what will form, they will tell you. So the table shows some information about mercury to bromide, bromine and mercury. They give you the boiling point, melting point and density. They ask you to draw an arrow on this figure to show where the apparatus should be heated. So it should heat from the bottom. Next, name the item of apparatus label A. A is just test tube. Name the process shown in figure 1.1, which breaks down mercury bromide. It's just electrolysis. Next, the electrodes used in process shown here are made from platinum. Give two reasons why platinum is suitable material for the electrode. This kind of question is possible to ask in paper 2 and paper 6 also. You need to know they are inert, the type of inert electrodes including graphite, platinum. Not only inert, they must conduct electricity. If the electrode unable to conduct electricity, then the whole electrolysis is unable to happen. Then on the figure, draw an X to show where mercury will collect. So we know mercury will form at cathode, which is the negative side, but since mercury itself is a liquid, so it will just below the electrode. And then the bromine gas that will release will come here, and then here will condense the bromine. Explain why ice is used in this experiment to condense the bromine gas. Next is question two is again a data analysis question. A student investigate the rate of reaction between iron nitrate and sodium thiosulfate. The student does five experiment using the apparatus shown here. You see from here, you put sodium thiosulfate into the solution of iron three nitrite, and then here have a printed text. Usually, we'll use X. Then it says use 50 cm cube measuring cylinder to pour 50 cm cube of iron three nitrate, which is here, into a 100 cm cube beaker. Stand the beaker on the text of a printed sheet. Use 25 cm cube measuring cylinder to pour 15 cm cube of sodium thiosulfate into the beaker. At the same time, start a stopwatch. Stir the contents of the beaker and look down from the beaker. When a text on the printed sheet become visible, stop the stopwatch. Means initially, you're unable to see the printed symbol or label. But after several times and reaction happen, then you can see the text. The stopwatch and recorded in time in seconds to the nearest whole number, rinse the beaker with distilled water, and then repeat experiment by using this amount of aqueous sodium thiosulfate instead of 15. So we are reducing the cm cube of the volume of sodium thiosulfate. Then we continue to reduce, reduce, reduce. So based on the reduced data, uh, you need to fit in here. Based on the front information, we know the five experiment, we are using different amount of sodium thiosulfate. List down here. Make sure all of them have one decimal place as standard. Time taken for text to become visible. So this we need to read from here. Here is zero and then here is 24. Here is zero. Here is 51. Here the minutes sign already one. So it's one minute and then another three more box. So it's one minute, three seconds. So it's 63 seconds. Next is also one minute. So it's 60 seconds. 38 plus 38. So it's 98 here. And here is also one minute and then two seconds before 60, which is 58, 118. So this is to test whether you know how to read the stopwatch. Next, write a suitable scale on y-axis and plot the results from experiment 1 to 5 on this figure. Draw a smooth curve of best fit. So this question, first we need to find the 
maximum time is 118, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. Then just nice, the maximum can be 118. So we know here is the anomalous, then we can join the other points without joining this point. This is the best fit graph. State why the content of beaker are stirred. So we always stir for experiment so that they can mix the reactant and the concentration are uniform throughout the mixture. And then deduce which experiment has the highest rate of reaction. So based on here, we have experiment one, two, three, four. So we found that experiment one, the time taken is the fastest. So that's why experiment one is the fastest. Which one have the highest rate of reaction? So we refer back, the time taken is the least is experiment one. See, experiment one is the least time, so have highest rate of reaction. And then by using a graph in 2.2 to predict the time taken for the tax to become visible, if the volume of sodium trisulfate is 12.5, so we're working on figure 2.2. 12.5 is here. So make sure you show clearly you are using the graph to obtain the value. It's based on your curve, so they will accept a range based on your value. 34. Based on the line on the graph. And then make sure you write the unit of time in second because here they do not provide. So if you do not write the unit, they will minus you one mark. Question F, explain why it would be an improvement to measure the volume of aqueous iron nitrate in the burette rather than measuring cylinder. This question they always ask because burette is more accurate. Explain why it's not possible to use pipette to measure the volumes of the aqueous sodium thiosulfate used in the experiment. Again, it's continuously repeat because the volume is not the same in each run. And pipette, we can only use for specific or fixed volume. So that's why it's not suitable to use pipette. Describe how the reliability of the results of the investigation can be checked. So we can always repeat and compare the results. Describe how the results of the experiment would change if the experiments are repeated using narrower and taller beaker. If it's narrower and taller beaker, a longer time for us to see the words, the letter on the paper, times longer because of the greater depth of liquid. H. Describe additional measurement that must be taken to determine whether the reaction in the investigation is exo or endo. So exo or endo is temperature changes. Then we need to use thermometer to measure the temperature before and after the reaction. Next question. A student has two substances, solid M and N. They show that the test on M so first thing, do a flame test on solid M. It shows lilac flame. It's obviously, it is potassium. We just refer to the last page for the test. Test two, dissolve the rest of solid M in water to form solution M. Divide solution M into four positions, which is one, two, three, four, four different tests. The first test use dilute nitric acid followed by silver nitrate. The one that we use silver nitrate with this, it will form cream precipitate. Cream precipitate, we can confirm here, is bromide ion. Then, second part of aqueous, we test with NaOH, dropwise, and then excess, a green precipitate form. So we know green precipitate, we have two, which is chromium and Fe2. But they say the precipitate remain when it is excess. So it's confirmed, not chromium. So we can confirm it's Fe2+. Test four. The third portion, add one cm cube of NaOH and aluminum foil. This is to check the presence of nitrate. If nitrate is there, ammonia is produced, ammonia is an alkali, it will cause Lima's paper to turn blue. But it remains in red, means that it do not have nitrite, do not have ammonia. Then has five. The fourth portion of M added dilute nitric acid with barium sulfate. This is to test the 
presence of sulfite ion. For this situation, they say they will form a white plastic so we can confirm sulfite ion is there. From here, we can already understand that it contains KeFe2+, and Br- and SO4- and do not have nitrate ion. Explain why a yellow Bunsen burner flame is not suitable. Because usually when we do flame tests, we need to use the blue flame. This question asks you why yellow cannot. So you just tell me, yellow flame is not hot enough. Done. Then ask you to identify the four ions. We already know it's potassium, bromide, ion 2, and sulfite. You can name it or you can write in symbol because this question do not mention about name. So you can write in either way. Next, they ask you to test on solid N. They say this is ammonium carbonate. Because the presence of gas, thus you can say you can see fizzing, one mark. Next, how to test the presence of carbon dioxide? We use lime water. We will turn milky. Next, the student dissolve the remaining solid N to form solution N, then divide into two portions again. First, they use NaOH and gently warm the mixture. So the alkali reaction first is with acid is neutralization. Second is with ammonium salt, and it will form ammonia gas. What is the ammonia gas test? It will turn the damp red limus paper blue. The reason is because ammonia gas itself is alkali. When it contacts with damp litmus paper, it will turn it blue. Next, to the second portion of N, the student add excess ammonia. This you can refer back. And this salt is actually ammonium salt. No changes here. So it just says no changes. Done. Last is the experiment question. They say limes and lemons are citrus food that contain acid in their juice. The acid react with alkali such as sodium hydroxide. Plan an investigation to find lime juice and lemon juice contain the most concentrated acid. Assume that citric acid is the only acid that present in the juice. Your plan must include the method that we use. This is obviously neutralization. We use titration method we see how the experiment do first. So whenever you do titration, we must have burette, and then we must have a beaker. Usually beaker here will put alkali and time of toline. Time of toline will show blue color in alkali situation. And when we add acid from the burette, we swirl it while doing the experiment. At last, when it changed to colorless, it shows that neutralization done. Whichever use the lesser volume of acid means that it's more concentrated. So just like that, we just write it in sentence. First, we add 100 cm cube sodium hydroxide into the beaker and add 3 drops of hemotoline. Then we add lime juice from burette the mixture throughout the experiment, record the volume of juice use when it changed colorless. Then we repeat the experiment with lemon juice. The juice that uses smallest volume is the most concentrated. Okay, just like this. So if you understand how the whole experiment run, then you just write it in words, then you can successfully score the full mark. So this is the end of today's session. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share my YouTube channel. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment here. See you in the next class. Bye-bye.